Welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host, Ali Gohar. Tonight, we have a very special show. We're going to be focusing on squash. Pakistan, as we all know, has an extremely rich history in this game. Uh, we've produced legends like Jangir Khan and Jan Sher Khan, the best in the world. But after they retired, I think we can all acknowledge that uh, the, 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 there was a decline after that, a serious decline, to be honest. Its popularity did decrease. But... Having said that, the talent never went away. The talent is still very much there. And that's what we're going to focus on tonight. We've got, we've got a couple of examples here in the studio, examples of tremendous talent. And we'll be speaking to them as well. They just won, uh, uh, they just won a big torn tournament. They participated in the 25th Asian Junior Individual Championship in Chennai and they did uh, extremely well and that's what we're going to discuss and of course uh, this the, the situation what where squash is right now and what more can be done to to further improve it so without further ado I'm going to introduce uh, my guests first uh, on my right I've been joined by Air Marshal Shahid Akhtar Alvi Senior Vice President Squash Federation sir Salaam Alaikum wonderful to have you on the show Thank you. And we also have Mohammed Hamza Khan, under 15 Asian champion. Salam alaikum, Hamza. And then we also have Abbas Zeb, under 19 uh, Asian champion. Salam alaikum, Abbas. And we will also have their coach, Mr. Fazal Shah. Fazal Sahab, Salam alaikum. First of all, congratulations to you. You've done uh, very, very well. We'll be speaking to you. So the, we'll be speaking to you as well. So how this is going to go, uh, folks, is that I'm first. I'm going. I'll be mainly speaking to uh, Air Marshal Shahid Akhtar uh, Alvi in English, and then I'll be speaking uh, to the players and the coach in Urdu. So I'm going to start with uh, Air Marshal Shahid Akhtar Alvi Saab, uh, sir. Before we get to uh, their success and what they've managed to achieve, and and the talent that remains in the country. I want to talk to you about the decline and, and how it all began. Because as I said in my introduction, we do have a very rich history in this game. We've produced uh, some of the greatest players in the world. Why do you think there was such, such a serious decline in your opinion? First of all, thank you very much for calling these young players. I think this is a kind of appreciation they need once in a while. And about the declining standards, perhaps you know, there are many uh, reasons for that. To start with, now the parents are interested that their kids should secure 90% and above. And in the evening, they are going to the tuition center. So sports as a whole has gone away from our schools. So if you want to have a sports promoted in the country, the most important thing is that it should start from the grassroots level. Right. It has finished from the grassroots level. This is, I think, one of the main. And secondly, the sponsorship that how much money you invest into it. If you're not investing into it, you can't produce world-class players because overall in the world, the game has gone very scientific. Mm -hmm. And you need to have a good infrastructure, good facilities, and you know, such things. I'll give you an example that, for example, in Canada, which is very good in ice hockey, their league starts at the age of 11. And they start to hunt for the players when they're just six years old. So that's how you can produce world-class player. No doubt about that. And of course, you know, the, the, the examples that we have in front of us, I mean, they have tremendous talent. Mm. But as you quite rightly said, you gave the example of Canada mm. and, uh, and ice hockey. It's all about being able to, to look for that talent, to hunt for that talent. But that's not where it stops. You have to be able to work at it, to, to, to harness it, to foster it. I'm sure uh, the Squash Federation has plans on doing that. Of course we have. For example, when I took over last year, so we studied a few models, like Egyptians are on top of the world. So we studied their model for about two months, and then we gave our presentation on that. In fact, I called all the legends, all the associations, all the departments, and also media. And we had a very lengthy, about eight hour sessions. And in that, we also gave a presentation on the Egyptian squash model. Um, that's an example. There are many other such. And then we decided that along with seniors, perhaps we have to nurture our juniors. We have to start from the grassroots level. Just to give you an example, like 
related to your previous question that Norway has just started their squash. So their senior mm -hmm. vice president was telling me that in the last four years, and he was telling me a big figure of tens of thousands have enrolled in the squash clubs. In Pakistan, which has been championed for the 40 years, unfortunately, we have less than 1,000 squash players who are registered. I mean, out of the population of 220 million, it's actually the base is very, very narrow. So out of this base, we have to produce players. And basically, it's the responsibility of the associations in all the four provinces. So about a year back, we asked them that they should hold trials for all the age groups, 11, 13, 15, 17, and 19. And out of that, they should select best six player and send these players to federation. So then in the federation, we had the trials and we selected two or three players. So after selecting those players, we did two things. Firstly, we called them in our squash academy and along with the best coaches and with other facilities that we have. Right. So we started training them as much as possible. Because you know, young player, 11, 13, he can't stay away from his home for a long time. They get homesick, naturally. So we started training them. And along with that, we decided that we will give them exposure of the outside world, international tournaments. So most of them in all these age groups have played something like seven to 10 international tournaments. So that's a kind of exposure. And most of these tournaments have been won by them. So our aim was that when they will start to you know, win gold medals at the age of 13 and 15, and if they continue to do that, and if we continue to support them, which is most important, and by the time they will get into a senior category after 19, perhaps they will be having some I mean, something right is happening. Obviously, something is something is going right. I mean, you've got the under-15 champion, we have the under-15 champion sitting here, and the under-19 champion. Would you put it down to, to, to natural talent or, or the coaching, or is it a combination of both, would you say? Obviously, it's a combination of everything. A boy got to have a talent. That's first thing. This talent should be spotted by their association and by the coaches who are there. And second, a training on a very scientific basis. Because after 15 or 16 years, then your muscles cannot be developed the way they are required to be done in the game of squash. So these things have to be done at the association's level. So it's, it's a mixture of that. But most importantly, they got to think like champion. Until and unless they will not think that they will become a champion. Perhaps that glory will never come. Having a positive mindset, we'll continue to, to talk about that. Let's go to our uh, champions now. First, I'll speak to Mohammed Hamza Khan, the under-15 champion. Beta, you very much. Thank you. Okay, first, tell me, Hamza, how did you squash? Why did you start squash? Squash is our family game. First of all, I thank God for our family game. Squash is our family game. I was with my father in 2000. In 2015, I squash. In 2015? No, no, no. In 2015, I started squash. I didn't get a court. Then, I started to play in this way. I learned squash. I got a lot of support from Pakistan Squash Federation. I got a lot of support from Pakistan. जिन्होंने मैं इतना इतना कुछ किया इन्शाल्लाह मैं मेहनत करूंगा पाकिस्तान का नाम रोशन करूंगा बिल्कुल आपने अभी रोशन किया बेटा अच्छा आप मुझे ये बताएं जब आप when you became the champion चेन्नई में feelings क्या था खुशी के बारे में बताएं जब आप जीत गया था कितने खुश थे कितने खुश थे आप बहुत खुश था अच्छा अच्छा of course of course अच्छा ठीक अबास जेब now the under nineteen champion बहुत 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 मुबारक हो आपको अच्छा वो सवाल आपने कैसे शुरू किया स्क्वाश स्क्वाश हमारी फैमिली गेम है और मैं अब्बू के साथ वो खुद भी स्क्वाश खेलते थे मेरा अब्बू वो मैं मैं उसके साथ स्क्वाश कोर्ट जाता था मैं भी गेम खेलता रहता था उसके साथ तो पहले टूर्नामेंट में जब मैंने नाम डाल लिया कराची में मैं पहली दफा कराची चला गया उधर मैंने क्वार्टर फाइनल खेला उधर कराची में तो उस वजह से बस मैं स्क्वाश खेलने शुरू किया अच्छा फजल शाह साहब द कोच 
کوچنگ کے بارے بارے میں بتائیں بعض لوگوں کا خیال یہ ہے کہ صرف اسکواش میں نہیں ہر ہر گیم میں پاکستان میں کہ کوچنگ اسٹینڈرڈز تھوڑا ڈراپ ہوا آپ وٹ یو تھنک اباؤٹ دیٹ کوچنگ ہر کوچ کا اپنا ایک اسٹائل ہوتا ہے کہ وہ فرسٹ تو یہ کہ کوچ کا جو پلیئر کے ساتھ جو وہ ہے نا انڈرسٹینڈنگ وہ ہونا چاہیے جی بالکل نا آئی لائک ٹو pick up on what uh, Fazal Shah Saab said. He was talking about uh, the coaching standards and that's something that you know, a lot of people discuss, not just in uh, squ- uh, squash and uh, hockey, but even you know, when you talk about cricket, which is the most popular sport in the country, people say that at the grassroots level, you know, the, uh, the under, 19, uh, under 19 and under 15 level, uh, the coaching isn't up to par. But that's, and even tennis, you know, we've done a number of shows on tennis and that's uh, w- one of the biggest complaints there. What are your thoughts on that? I think coaching has not been our strong point, frankly. Most of our ex-players who could have become a good coach are now working outside the country. Mm. They are in Malaysian national coaches, Pakistani, and even we have in Hong Kong, and number of people in USA, Iran, I mean, Gulf states, so they all have scattered over there. And I think one of the main reason for that is that if you don't find good employment opportunities in the country, then perhaps you will go away if you have a greener pastures to look forward. Mm-hmm. So that's where, you know, we can say. So what we have done in the recent past is that obviously we have given them more incentives and, and, and also we are trying to have now coaching courses <coughs> and we, we are trying to continuously improve this mm-hmm. department also but still this is not the strongest department I mean uh, not the way I would like to have it let's talk mm-hmm. about these boys sitting next to us uh, sitting uh, sitting with us Hamza and uh, Abbas now you were telling you were telling me off camera how much you've invested in these boys because you saw and other people saw how much natural talent that they have and they proved it uh, by uh, by winning the gold can you can you talk to us about that the kind of work that you put in to these boys yeah actually idly speaking the four associations they are supposed to produce the players right and traditionally the low role of federation was that these players which are produced by the associations so before any major tournament which is like Asian Championship or the World Championship and things like that. They would come to the Federation, have one camp, maybe for two weeks or three or four weeks. And there could be a selection. And then they would be sent abroad for the tournament. So this traditionally what was Federation was doing. But my predecessor, <coughs> Air Vice Marshal Razi, so he thought that might as well set up an academy over here with the Federation. So an academy was established, I think two or three years back. And now what we are doing is that we are keeping these players most of the time in our academy. So where they are provided with everything, starting from you know, their equipment, complete the dressings, their food, their shelter, their stipend. So everything is provided to them, along with obviously coaching and providing the, the best playing facilities. <coughs> and on top of that, we are sending them so frequently abroad. But in that, I would like to mention our president, who is chief of the year staff, mm-hmm. the previous chief, Air Marshal Sohail, and now I'm working with the new chief. And the new chief is a sports, is the squash player himself. So that's an advantage we have. So the Air Force is sponsoring all these uh, players. So, I mean, that's the kind of a role Pakistan Air Force is playing. Because we, we, we don't have sponsorship left in the country. Right. Because people think that the viewership for the squash is very less. Thanks God that we have Serena Hotel, which are a big time sponsor yeah. for squash. Well, that's something we have to talk about. We're going to continue to discuss this with you, Air Marshal Alvi Saab, and our champions and this wonderful coach after a short break. Stay tuned.
The ancient city of Taxila is the heart of stonework in Pakistan. This art, which has been preserved and practiced for centuries, can be seen on many major landmarks of the country. Notably, the Pietra Dura work in the Lahore Fort's Shish Mahal. These stone products take days to complete and require immense precision and skill from the craftsmen. The final products are perfect for souvenirs, gifts and decoration pieces, each depicting the richness of Pakistani culture at its best. Camel skin and ivory craft are trademarks of Multan's handicraft repertoire. Camel skin is cleaned, dried and mounted onto molds which can be of any shape desired. Multicolored lacquer painting is then used to ornament the molds which in the end bear a Mughal or Persian feel. Welcome back. Tonight we're focused on squash. Uh, we've been uh, spe uh, we've been speaking to Air Marshal Shah uh, Shahid Alvi Saab, and we've been speaking to two of our wonderful champions and their coach. And we're going to continue to do that. I'll uh, begin once again with Air Marshal Alvi, Senior Vice President, Squash Federation. So before the break, we were talking about sponsorship and the kind of uh, support that's needed. You obviously need more sponsorship there's no there's no doubt about that i'd like to ask you before we get to our champions again i'd like to ask you uh, i'd like to ask you about that and of course you, the role of the media i think that's very important you know when it comes to squash uh, hockey tennis because these these sports need our support i feel like you know the the media and i'm including myself in this as well that we sometimes tend to uh, neglect other sports and I think that's one of the reasons why there has been a decline I've got to be honest here so first on sponsorship and then uh, what the media uh, what the media can do well on the part of sponsorship like I said that Serena is sponsoring us in a big way and rest then the Air Force is playing its part and other than that we have not been able to really garner any support from any other quarter recently Huawei has done mm. they are planning to hold one tournament yeah and uh, other than that perhaps all the sponsorship has finally gone to cricket because people believe that the viewership for squash is less and then it it has become less glamorous after the exit of Jan Shir Khan so so I would say but you know money is not a real big issue right it, it, it it has to start from the grassroots level. Last year, we had one tournament and Chief of the Army Staff, General Bajwa, was sitting beside me and I requested him. I said, sir, in all the new DHAs, you should have one squash complex. And he agreed on that. So <laughs> if we have squash complexes, you know, then I think the kids would come out and they would play. So we have to make these things accessible to them. And then we will have a larger pool and from that pool we will select more people but having said that obviously sponsorship will play its role <laughs> why because 
these plays which I'm having, you know, in all the age categories, including seniors, we, we keep telling departments that please give them jobs. They need some kind of a social security for themselves. And why not? Because if they have some stable job, perhaps they, they can concentrate more on this. For the juniors player, we have started this stipend so that to encourage them to stay with us. And uh, the role of the media, in your opinion? I think the role of media nowadays, who can argue about its role? That the media has been quite supportive. Whenever you know we, we requested them, they would come. But as far as projecting Scosh and the glories, well, it's not as we want. For example, these juniors players that I was talking, in the last one year, we made them play about seven to eight international tournaments. And in those tournaments, they have won 22 gold, 11 silver, and 17 bronze. And we haven't seen that in media. Right. We're going to continue uh, talking about this is a very interesting discussion, but back to our champions, Mohammed Hamza Khan, the under 15 champion. Hamza, uh, training ke baare mein batai. How do you train? Subah, um, physical karte oh, physical se jab aate hain to phir 10 10 se lekar 12 tak hum sir ke sath training karte coach ke sath coach ke sath training karte aur phir uske baad jab thodi thoda rest lete aur phir game shuru hoti hai sham ke waqt hum game khelte aur isi tarah se is rozana daily routine hai hamari is tarah acha theek hai sone ka time sone ka time 9 9 9 baje tak bas 9 baje se raha 9 10 baje acha और खाने के बारे में हमारी अच्छी डाइट है बहुत अच्छी डाइट है हमारी क्या खाते हैं आप गोश्त मेनली गोश्त दूध फ्रूट्स अच्छा मुझे ये बता आपको पसंद क्या है इफ यू कूड ईट एनीथिंग क्या बर्गर्स पिज्जा चिकन कोरमा हलीम फेवरेट फेवरेट डिश कौन सा है आपका موسیقی ان کے ساتھ ہم ٹریننگ کرتے دس بجے سے لے کے بارہ بجے تک پھر اس کے بعد ریسٹ کرتے اور پروٹین ڈائٹ کرتے نا ہم لنچ میں اس کے بعد ہم تین بجے سے لے کے پانچ بجے تک پھر گیم ہیں کھیلتے اس کے بعد مزے کا پروٹین ڈائٹ جی اچھا 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 اور نو بجے سونے کا ٹائم اور نو بجے سونے کا ٹائم اچھا ایر مارشل صاحب یہ کہہ رہا تھا آپ کی آپ موویز بھی دیکھتے ہیں وہ جانگیر خان جان شیر خان موسیقی تو ہارس قاسم کے تو میچز اس طرح ہوتے تھے کہ وہ نہ دیکھنے والے ہوتے تھے اکثر میرے پلیئر اٹھ جاتے تھے کہتے ہیں یہ میچ تو ہم نہیں دیکھ سکتے ہیں اور جب ہارس قاسم کا میچ ختم ہوتا تھا تو ابھی بھی اگر آپ میری فیلنگ دیکھ لیں تو ابھی بھی میں میری باڈی میں وہ نہیں ہے کیونکہ وہ اتنی ڈینجر میچ ہوتے تھے نا کہ انڈیان آ کے کہتے تھے خدا کے لیے ہارٹ اٹیک نہ کرانا یہ کیا کر رہا تم لوگ ڈاؤن ہو کے اب ہارس قاسم کا ایک میچ تھا ٹو آل تھا سیون ون ڈاؤن تھا ففت گیم میں ادھر سے وہ نائن فائف فر ڈاؤن ہو گئے تو اس کے بعد وہ الیون نائن اس نے نکال دیا تھا ملیشین کو اور اس طرح فائنل سے پہلے میں سیونٹی فائف سیونٹی ایٹی منٹس اس کا میچ ہوا تھا سیون فائنل جب فائنل سے پہلے ایٹی منٹس جی سیون فائنل فائنل سے پہلے میں بیٹھا ہوتا ان کو وام اپ کرانے کے بعد میں نے اس کو کہا ہے ہارس کو ہارس کیا آپ کی پوزیشن ہے کہتا ہے ایک کا جنازہ نکلے گا آج یا وہ مرے گا کوٹ میں یا میں مر جاؤں گا تو اس کے بعد بھی وہ فرس گیم جب ہار ہے تو سیکنڈ گیم میں اس نے کم بیک کر دیا ہے تر گیم ٹو آل ہو گئے تھے فور ون فٹ ڈاؤن ہو گیا تھا تو میرے ساتھ عباس بیٹھا ہوا تو اس کا فائنل ہونے والا تھا تو عباس مجھے کہتا ہے کیپٹن 
मैं तो नहीं देख सकता हूँ मैं तो भाग रहा हूँ यहाँ <laughs> तो असद बैठा हुआ था मैंने कहा बैठ जाओ वो ना करना है इस तरह तो उसके बाद फिर ये हुआ था कि कुछ लोग निकल गए थे वहाँ से इंडियन जब वापस आ गए तो वो पूछ रहे थे कि मैच का क्या हुआ पाकिस्तान जीत गया किस तरह ये तो हो ही नहीं सकता है वो कह रहे थे कि जो पुराना स्क्वाश था पाकिस्तान में ना आप लोगों ने उनकी याद ताज़ा करा दिया हमें और ये फर्स्ट टाइम हिस्ट्री में हुआ है कि एशियन में चार कैटेगरी में पाकिस्तान फाइनल खेल रहा था कुछ फैमिलीज थी वो बता रहे थे कि जो जॉर्डन में मैच हुआ था ना तो सारे श्रीलंका श्रीलंकन थे तो बाद में कहते हैं इधर आए तो सारे पाकिस्तानी पाकिस्तानी और उस उस पे कि जब आपके सब खिलाफ जा रहे हैं प्लेयर है रेफरी है क्राउड है और उसमें आप जीतते हो ना तो उसका कोई अपना ही मजा होता है और जब पाकिस्तान जिंदाबाद का नारा होता है ना तो फिर तो सारे वो क्लैपिंग करते हैं उसमें साहब जैसे आप कहानी अभी बता रहा था मैं भी काम रहा हूँ इंटरेस्टिंग वे अच्छा दो तीन प्लेयर्स दो तीन प्लेयर्स और है आपने हारिस के बारे में बात किया एक और भी था अली क्यूँकि हम जब बैठ जाते थे मीटिंग में मैच के बाद तो सुबह से न हम नाश्ता करते थे स्पेशली में और न लंच करते थे न पानी पीते था कोर्ट के सामने साइड पे बैठा था इनकी वीडियो देखता था रात को जब मीटिंग होती थी उसमें इनकी गलतियां बताता था प्लेयर्स के बारे में बताता था तो अक्सर ये करते थे कैप्टन वो तो टॉप सीट है ये मैंने कहा टॉप सीट कौन है टॉप सीट तो आप लोग हो और हमें इतनी भी फुर्सत नहीं होती थी कि वो बोर्ड पे हम देखते थे सीटिंग नंबर कौन है इनका और किसका है सिर्फ ये सोचते थे कि मारना ही मारना है जीतना ही जीत के जाना है यहाँ से ठीक है फजल साहब इन दोनों के बारे में बात करते हैं हमजा हमजा एंड जेब obviously natural talent to hai that's why they've gone in and won lekin aapke khayal mein as their coach ki kya sabse behtareen skill kya hai in this game, game first hamza and then zaid abbas basically baat hai ki aap ek player ko kis tarah read karte hain ab hamza tha ye khela tha indian ke sath ab wo court is tarah tha ki aap pace pe uske sath nahi khelna jata hai kyunki fast pace pe khelte ho na aap to wo aap haroge उस अगर मीडियम पेस पे लाओगे ना तो फिर वो हमजा बहुत अच्छे इसने इंडियन को रिकवर किया था और उसने बिल्कुल स्लो पेस पे वो लाया हुआ था कि वो हो गया उसका फादर फाइनल के बाद मेरे पास आया है मुझे कह रहा था कि वो मैंने बेटे को बताया है कि हमजा आपके साथ ये करेगा लेकिन वो नहीं मान रहा था वो कहता नहीं मैंने फास्ट पेस पे खेलना है तो माशा हमजा जो है वो काफी टैलेंट प्लेयर है और इन फ्यूचर में वो काफी अच्छे वो करेंगे अच्छा हमजा बताए बैक हैंड बेहतर है आपका या फोर हैंड दोनों दोनों अच्छा अब्बास मैं राइट हैंड हां राइट हैंड अच्छा ठीक है ठीक है एम मार्शल इफ आई कैन डू या शो यू नो वी हैव मेंशनड अबाउट दीस कोचेस हु आर वर्किंग इन द पाकिस्तान स्क्वाश फेडरेशन बट यू नो एक्चुअली द कोचेस आर वर्किंग इन द एसोसिएशंस हु हैव ग्रूम दीस प्लेयर्स इन द डिफरेंट प्रोविंसेस सो अ लॉट ऑफ क्रेडिट गोस टू दोस कोचेस हु हैव डन देयर जॉब ओवर देयर Yeah, no doubt about that. Obviously, mm. great deal of credit goes to them. But mm. before uh, w- when uh, we left off talking about how to promote this sport and uh, and market this sport more, and firstly, actually, before I forget, it's great to see that uh, part of their training, part of their training is for them to to look at old movies of legends of Jangir Khan and Jan Cher Khan. They obviously learn a lot from that, and that's where squash. as compared to maybe some other sports uh, has its uh, advantages they get to look up and learn from well arguably the greatest the greatest players in the world not only that they watch their movies but sometimes we call them and i uh, make them you know all of these players stand in front of them and then they talk about the kind of a training they used to do and uh, they would tell them that they would play for eight hours and this is the kind of a dedication they need so we often have these kind of sessions also beside employing a psychiatrist to <laughs> you know strengthen their mind and That's also very important. we employed a wonderful you know staff. an english teacher also so you know on our part we are trying to you know cover all the areas for their promotion i'm um, if mr jangir khan the great man spoke to them about did he tell them in detail about how much he trained and the hurdles that he faced he and and, and what he managed to 
achieve against uh, all odds. Did he explain all that to them? Of course he did. He, so that's he's quite a story. associated with us. And while they were leaving, we requested him the Karachi also to have a session with them. So, and similarly, a few days back, Jan Sher Khan, he came and he spoke with them. And actually, he was very angry with many of them. That why you are not world champions. <laughs> really, already? Well, I mean, I guess it's a way, you know, to be to yeah, be hard obviously. on them. That'll mot that, that'll motivate them more. But those two, especially Jangir Khan, Sabir, the greatest squash player that's ever lived. There's no doubt about that. But you know, so back to the the talent that that's that that's still present in the country. I mean, I'm looking at. Hamza here, I mean, he's under 15 and cha champion. He looks like he's, what, 11, 12 years old. Then you've got Abbas here, who's uh, very young, and I can see them on television. It just, you, it really hits you. It's really hit me how how young they actually are. So it's quite incredible that, and there are two or three other boys that aren't here who have also done, who, who have done equally well. So that's another huge advantage, sir, that at this age, they're so incredibly talented, naturally gifted. Yeah, obviously, they are talented. Now, what they need to do is that they should work with the same zeal and spirit. I mean, this is how nowadays squash is being played. I observed some of the foreign players who came to play in Pakistan. After they lost the match, <coughs> but their flight was after two days, they would still practice. I mean, that's the kind of dedication we demand from these players. And uh, I see that in terms of this dedication, in terms of a personal hard work, I mean, we have to cover some distance. Because when we took over, as uh, when I took over, and along with me, the secretary, the two weaknesses that we found, one was stamina, mm -hmm. and the other was a discipline in the daily routine. So that's where my secretary is pretty harsh on that. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to really uh, give inculcate us stress, discipline. Yeah, inculcate discipline, and along with that, improving their stamina. Because nowadays, squash has become a very fast game. And at the end of the day, you know, if you are stretched till fifth game, it's a stamina which will count. So, and, and that's why we keep pressing them. Mm. And we tell them that you have to play even if, when you go back on holidays. I mean, every day. Kamar Zaman, he, he told yeah. me that once they were going to offer the Eid prayer in Peshawar, and they found Jan Sher Khan was taking rounds in the field instead of going for the prayer. So that is the kind of a dedication. Yeah, he used to run had. what, I think, 10, 10, 10 miles or maybe more than that? Yeah, that was I his mean, training, it was something crazy. It was but inspirational, really. Exactly. So, so you mentioned uh, that you, uh, you hired an English teacher for them and, uh, and a psychologist, which is, uh, which is very, very smart. You talked about having uh, the importance of having a never say die attitude, a positive mindset really. And that's the difference between a good player and a great player. If they believe in these two boys, I mean, uh, you can tell that, you know, the, 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 the desire to win, the hunger is there and that's where a psychologist comes in. And when it comes to English, of course, they'll be touring, they'll be touring a lot, they'll be required to speak in English. Sometimes they don't have to, they don't have to be fluent, but the idea is just to, give them confidence. That's the idea behind it. Yeah, and apart from this confidence, you know, technically also, when you're contesting a point with a match referee, mm. you'll have to speak and explain your point of view. Mm -hmm. So if you don't, then you will just stay silent and the other person will have an advantage. So, and this is also one of the weakness we found. They're reluctant to speak and contest, contest their point of view. And sometimes they're right but they just shy away. I mean, it's, it's a part of the whole training process, and I'm sure in due course of time, they'll be very confident, they'll be very good. They're already shown that kind of a spark. Before we end the show, we were talking about uh, ma ma marketing squash, how, uh, how to do it, and I think this is very important. So we were also talking about this off-air, that look, everything now, I'm, and I'm sure, you know that everything is online now. Everything is digital now. While the, the media certainly has a role to play in sponsorship, of course, you know, those are crucial aspects. But even these young boys sitting in front of us, these champions, they're from that generation where uh, they, they understand the digi digital world. 
and they can play a role in this uh, themselves and i'm sure you can you, you can help them with it as well as we we spoke about you know creating making instagram accounts being active on instagram being active on snapchat having having facebook accounts you know documenting uh, their their training routine their matches when they're in chennai what they're doing in chennai not just playing squash but when they go out you know because that's how you now attract attention with it's all about hashtags now so so i'm sure uh, you understand that and we'll you'll make these boys understand it as well that that's what uh, the order of the day is now of course pri priority is there again they'll only become uh, famous and recognized if if they're good at what they do but this is also extremely important marketing themselves so so the world can take notice of of how brilliant they are you're absolutely right. And I see Egyptian players doing this thing and the English players are doing this thing, which they lack, obviously. And it's, a, it's actually, at this stage, it's a double-edged sword. In the beginning, we confronted with the problem how to take away their mobile. Because if they will spend more time on, you know, what's happened, these kind mm. of a thing, instead of staying in the court. So initially, we actually wanted to take away their cell phones, especially at night, because we wanted to hit them we wanted them to hit the bed at 10 o'clock because they have to get up early in the morning. They would not do that. And, you know, quietly they would be playing with a cell phone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on one hand, this is the issue. On the other hand, like you say, that if they use this kind of a media, perhaps they will be able to promote the game of squash. We have a department for that in our squash federation. And, you know, this Instagram or this Facebook, we are using those kind of mediums, not as much as perhaps you desire, but in due course of time, we'll start to do that. I, I would like to say one thing, which I want people to know that in the last year when I took over, squash was banned in Pakistan internationally because of the security situation. And we had a lot of meetings, they were not willing. So what we did is that I, I talked to Chief of the Year staff and we decided that we'll have two tournaments, Pakistan versus World Five, and Pakistan versus Egypt. So we called their players in individual capacity. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we paid them. And we had a big tournament in Pakistan in last August. So we wanted to prove to the world that we can have, Pakistan is a safe place. And after that tournament, the security company, which Professional Squash Association hires, they came to the Pakistan. Obviously, we funded them. They had a survey, and they allotted three tournaments to us in last year. And this year, they gave us 19 international tournaments in Pakistan. And out of those 19 international tournaments, especially 10 tournaments were only for Pakistani players, which is good in a way that in the final, they will be playing, but they will be getting regular points. So their seedings would start to come down. So 19 international tournaments, that's for the first time. And I hope that they will cash on to these tournaments. They will improve their skills by playing with the foreign players. And at the end of the day, next year, we will have even more. What's next for these boys? What's coming up? <laughs> well, next is they will perhaps go to US Open, and then next is British Junior. Right. Well, I'm sure they're going to be successful. They've done uh, wonderfully well in Chennai. They seem to be working uh, extremely hard. Things seem to be going in the right direction, and I'm sure they're going to do absolutely brilliantly in the years to come. We've got to leave it at that. Air Marshal Alvi Saab, thank you very much for coming on the show. You're doing fantastic work. Mohammed Hamza Khan, under 15 champion, thank you very much. Paul Paul Shukri Aapka, Abbas Ab, under 19 champion, thank you very much for coming on the show. And Fazal Shah, their coach, Paul Paul Shukri Aapka, thank you, thank you very thank much you. for coming on. It was a pleasure having all of you. Thank you very much. I think if once in a while these people are given, you know, some publicity or they are being called like you call them today, then perhaps their parents will be more encouraged. More than once in a while, so they deserve it. They've done tremendously well and you're doing tremendous work. Thank you very much for making this happen. Thank you very Thank much. You. That's all we have time for. Keep watching Sports Extra on PTV World. See you next time.